before we get into today's video i don't want to see any comments about how bad my hair is or the fact that i look like i've just gotten out of bed because both of those things are exactly true but i'm still gonna film a video so let's just get started hey guys welcome back to my channel so a lot of you guys wanted me to make a video on a level mats and the things to consider before you choose a level mats so that's exactly what i'm going to do i've already made videos on biology chemistry and physics those are all linked down below so you can go watch those after you watch this one and without further ado let's get into it so as much as i hate starting off with this i feel like it has to be said and that is if you didn't do further maths at gcse you're going to find A-level maths hard. Not impossible, but hard. Some of you may be thinking, how do you know this? And that is because quite a lot of my friends have actually experienced this. They found A-level maths a lot harder because they didn't do further maths at GCSE. And also my maths teacher himself has also said this. If you didn't do further maths at GCSE, you are going to find A-level maths hard. The reason for this is because at GCSE further maths level, you do topics like differentiation, logarithms, integration, things that are not taught at ordinary GCSE maths level. And so if you're going into A-level maths without all of that prior knowledge, it's really difficult to catch up not impossible but really difficult let alone the fact that you have all of that year's work to learn as well that's why i'm choosing to mention it at the very start of the video and that's why i think it's something that you should consider before you choose a level maths the second thing that you need to consider is the pace now i think i've mentioned this in all of my other a level videos but i really do stand by it especially for maths you're going to have to complete pure maths which takes a lot of time mechanics and also statistics in one year for one AS course and then the next year for the A2 course. That is a lot of maths to cover in the space of two years. You have to be aware that for some topics, you'll literally be spending less than a week or even a week and then just moving on super quickly because you need to get those courses finished. And so the pace can be quite intense at times, which can be a pain when it comes to revision because then you're like, oh wait, when did we even do that though you already did it like ages ago so i think that's something that you should also consider before you choose a level maths are you going to be able to cope with the pace of the work and the pace that your teacher teaches with because it's hard at times now this is one thing i think everyone should hear and i mean everyone you might think this is a silly story but i promise it's extremely important and it has a point so please don't skip ahead because this is the one point that i think you need to listen to my teacher once said that at gcse questions will kind of spoon feed you so imagine you have a toolbox and the question says using a hammer do this using the screwdriver do this etc 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 so the questions are kind of leading you into what you have to do to solve the problem but at a level they throw you into the deep end and it's like fix my washing machine i feel i have a duty to stress this to you math is hard at a level because you're given literally no instruction very little instruction is given and you're expected to be able to solve this complex problem it's not easy and it's a skill that a lot of people take time to develop i still find it so hard to get my head around the fact that i am just expected to be able to do this page of working out to solve this problem and so i think that everyone should hear that story because it really does relate to that lack of instruction and also the step up from gcse really does come into play here so that's something that i also think you should consider the last thing i want to mention is how choosing a level maths can help with other subjects now if you're one of those people that actually reads the description boxes which thank you if you do i have at the bottom of my description box the a levels that i do but for those of you that don't know or just want it quickly i do chemistry physics biology and maths and maths has definitely helped with all of these subjects quite a bit out of all those subjects the most obvious one is obviously physics physics is pretty much maths based and so i find that maths can really help especially the mechanics unit it really does help me with my physics for projectiles vectors moments all of that really does help but even for chemistry and biology in chemistry, you plot graphs for logarithms. In biology, you see exponential growth and just different types of graphs as well. So maths really does help for my A-levels and I think it could help with yours as well. If maths is a subject that you really want to do, try and choose complementary subjects to it and also check out uni courses because a lot of them do use maths. So it's a really useful and versatile subject like that. So yeah, so that is the end of this video. I know it was short, but that's because of the fact that I need to get it out in the space of two hours. So that's all my poor time management skills. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed and found it useful. Leave all of your comments and suggestions and other questions down below. I really like to read all of your comments. They make my day. If you want to see more of my face, 
uh, you might want to subscribe to join our small community and also go follow me on Instagram because I'm going to try and post a bit more on there. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and I'll see you next week for another video. Bye!